So if you have diabetes or prediabetes, you may have heard about how this spice cinnamon can help lower your blood sugar levels. Well, can it? So in this video, I'm going to show you the research on cinnamon and diabetes and then prediabetes, show you what that's like, and then sum it all up at the end with some side effects you should be thinking about if you're going to try cinnamon for you. So before we go any further, cinnamon, it's in pretty much all of our kitchens, but I want you to know that things are complicated. There are over 250 different types of cinnamon out there. I've just listed three of them here for your, uh, that you can see. But when it comes to diabetes, realize that most of the research is using cassia cinnamon, cassia cinnamon. And so that's why if you're looking for a cinnamon supplement, it's probably going to contain cassia for good reason. So what's the research on diabetes and cinnamon? Well, we've got this study, the effectiveness of cinnamon for lowering hemoglobin A1C levels in people with type 2 diabetes. If you've never heard of hemoglobin A1C levels before, uh, essentially it's sugar-coated hemoglobin. That's basically what it is. And doctors will measure this molecule to get an idea of how progressed your diabetes is. The higher the A1C level, the worse the diabetes tends to be. So in this investigation, they've got 109 people. They all got type 2 diabetes. Again, you can see their A1C level is above 7. Normally, you want to keep that in the low 6s or even the high 5s. Uh, so they've got type 2 diabetes. They break them up into two different groups. They've got those who they do this the usual diabetes management care with. And then they do have another group. They do the same thing, except now they also give them cinnamon. On top of that, they give them one gram of cinnamon a day for nine, or excuse me, 90 days, three months. And again, I'll also point out one gram is also 1,000 milligrams. And so if you go looking for a supplement, sometimes they measure it in, in grams, sometimes they tell you the dosage in milligrams, but one gram is 1,000 milligrams. So did it lower the A1C level? Yeah. So after three months, they noted the cassia cinnamon lowered hemoglobin A1C levels by roughly about 1%. And while that may not seem like a lot, it actually is significant. And in terms of A1C, anything you can do to lower it makes big changes, big improvements on your long-term health. So a 1% drop is actually a step in the right direction. So that's actually good news. And there are other studies also on cassia cinnamon as well. But I'll, I'll basically cut to the chase here by showing you this, uh, this study of studies. It's called a meta-analysis. Basically, they grab a bunch of previous studies. They see if they can you know, crank out some statistics and find some commonalities here. So here they looked at 10 previous uh, cinnamon diabetes studies, and they concluded, yeah, cassia cinnamon was effective at lowering uh, blood sugar, triglycerides, total cholesterol levels, and even bad cholesterol, LDL levels as well. So pretty good news overall for cassia cinnamon and, and type 2 diabetes. But what about prediabetes? So prediabetes is also called metabolic syndrome. It basically refers to a cluster of things that pop up in our bodies uh, before we are officially diagnosed as having type 2 diabetes. These are some of the more salient characteristics here. Uh, number one, having a large belly. Uh, that actually increases inflammation in the body, and which, again, too much inflammation can be is not so good in terms of diseases. Uh, you don't want to have a lot of inflammation in the cells of your body. Uh, you also, number point number two, insulin resistance. Very important here. Insulin resistance, you may have heard of this, but what is it? Insulin resistance means your insulin is not working as well as it should to lower blood sugar levels. That's called insulin resistance. Well, if your insulin is not working as well as it should, that means your blood sugar is going to go higher than it should. You don't want to have too high blood sugar because that can actually be very bad for us. You also see elevated blood, blood pressure, triglycerides, and a decrease in HDL, HDL also known as uh, good cholesterol. And I want to point out that I personally think a lot of people don't take prediabetes seriously, but they really should because prediabetes means if you don't take care of this now, well, you're going to be a type 2 diabetic eventually. It may be a year, maybe two years down the road, maybe less, depends. Uh, but prediabetes means you really want to nip this in the bud, otherwise it's only going to get worse. So can cinnamon help this? So I want to bring your attention this study, which I think is the best study so far conducted. The influence of cinnamon on glycemic control, blood sugar control, in people with prediabetes. Essentially, the study looks like this. 
got 54 people. They've all got prediabetes. They split up into two groups. Got a cinnamon group, got a placebo group. Pretty straightforward. In terms of how much cinnamon they took, it looked like this. They took 500 milligrams of cinnamon three times a day. Do the math, that comes to 1,500 milligrams of cinnamon a day for three months. And I'll also point out, this study did not use cassia cinnamon. It used a different type called Saigon cinnamon. I will actually, I actually found this, the actual supplement they used. I'll link to it in the description so you can check it out. So what happened? Three months later, yeah, it appeared to work. Significant lower blood sugar levels, significantly lower hemoglobin A1C levels from this, uh, this, this cinnamon supplement in people with uh, prediabetes. Now, I do think that's the best study so far. I will call your, call your attention to this other investigation, which I think is a mixed bag. Uh, cassia, it's one of cassia cinnamon. Cassium cinnamon, the title says it all, does not change insulin sensitivity, doesn't make insulin work any better. And it also does not raise liver enzymes in people with uh, impaired glucose tolerance. Again, they basically have prediabetes. Uh, so again, it's a mixed bag. You've got some good, you've got some not so good. The study looks like this. 21 people, they've all essentially got prediabetes. They give them cinnamon, a lot of cinnamon. They give them six grams a day, twice a day. That's 12 grams of cinnamon a day for three months. 12,000 milligrams of cinnamon a day for three months, I should point out. And, and, and it actually even capsules of 500 milligrams a piece. So do the math. They were taking a lot of capsules throughout the day. And they find that it, it did not you know, improve their, 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 their blood sugar or anything like that, it didn't affect insulin levels, and it didn't help their liver enzymes either. Uh, again, even though they were taking an awful lot of cinnamon. And again, I will point out, it did not raise the, the liver enzymes. And that's important because I'm gonna point something out to you about cinnamon uh, in the side effects section. I want you to keep in the back of your mind. But one thing I realized when I read this investigation the placebo group, who you wouldn't expect to see anything in, it was the placebo group that actually had lower fasting, resting insulin levels after the 12 weeks were up. How in the world did the placebo cause beneficial changes? Well, as I read the study, I discover the placebo actually contained fiber. Yeah, it contained a fiber called cellulose. Why is that important? Well, it turns out our microbiome, those bacteria that live inside of our large intestine, those microbiome love to eat fiber. And when they eat fiber, they give off compounds that you and I use in turn to stay healthy. So it makes sense that what probably happened here is the microbiome ate the cellulose fiber and gave off some compounds that affected the insulin levels in these individuals. So again, mixed bag, I would love to see the study replicated, uh, but not include a fiber as a placebo. In terms of side effects, there are some things you'd be aware of if you're gonna try this for yourself. Number one, I would start with the least possible cinnamon you can in terms of a supplement for the first week or so. We're all different. Some people may have side effects, some people may not have side effects. So if you take the least, you're probably gonna have the least possible side effects. Don't go by what the company says. I tend to basically take those with it with a grain of salt. When I see they say, they'll say things like, oh, take four capsules a day. Start with the least possible, okay? And that's, that's wise advice for any new dietary supplement you take. If you're pregnant or breastfeeding, same thing. You want to talk to your doctor first. Uh, let's be cautious about this. And one reason I would say to be cautious because in terms of dietary supplements in general, there's not a lot of pregnancy breastfeeding supplement research out there that I've ever seen after 25 years of investigating these things. Again, it's, it's something that I, it, it's just not used, not, not, not in research. They don't tend to use women breastfeeding or who are pregnant. So again, let's, let's take the course of least resistance. Let's talk to your doctor about that. If you are taking medications such as blood thinning medications like Coumadin or Warfarin, yeah, you really wanna to talk to your doctor because cinnamon also has a blood thinning effect. And it's possible that maybe you might over thin the blood and that could be actually very bad for us. So again, run that past your doctor. Same thing if you're having surgery. This is why doctors often tell people to get off their supplements uh, at least a couple weeks before surgery. You don't wanna have surgery and then you can't clot, okay? So uh, again, do, do your due diligence, ask your doctor, hey, what do you think about cinnamon before surgery? They're probably gonna tell you to stop taking it, but let's let them make that call. 
And then also, since we are talking diabetes here, it's quite possible some people watching me now may be taking diabetes medications like, for instance, metformin uh, or even insulin. Yeah, some type 2 diabetics are taking insulin. Well, think about it. These drugs lower blood sugar. Well, cinnamon can lower blood sugar. Is it possible they may combine to lower blood sugar even more? Maybe, and that's why I would uh, basically ask your doctor first. You really want to take, you want to be careful when it comes to this. And the same thing is true when it comes to any kind of dietary supplements that can lower blood sugar as well. Yeah, some supplements can do this. For instance, I'm thinking chromium, chromium picolinate, which is very popular in, in the diabetes, diabetics world for lowering uh, blood sugar. Uh, and even berberine, berberine is another dietary supplement which may lower blood sugar as well. Again, is it possible? they may add to the effects of insulin or excuse me, uh, cinnamon to lower blood sugar too much. Maybe. So just be cautious when it comes to this. Now, in addition to all this, I want to call your attention to one final side effect that you may not be aware of, and that's this. Kumarin. Kumarin is a compound in cinnamon uh, that has been associated with liver problems, hepatitis. Uh, and again, the research actually dated back, original research from the 1950s found that high doses of cinnamon might cause liver problems in laboratory animals. Here is an investigation from the late 1990s where these researchers noted some of the people they gave cinnamon to, they began to have liver issues. Their liver enzymes started to rise when they were given cinnamon. Again, this is just one such investigation. Here is another report. It's not an investigation, it's a report of one person. She's a 73-year-old woman. One week, one week after she starts taking a cinnamon supplement, she starts uh, having hepatitis symptoms. Her liver enzymes are going out of whack. And so she's in the hospital. And what I noticed about this study is that, number one, they did not tell us the brand of cinnamon she was taking. I didn't like that. They also didn't tell us how much cinnamon she was taking either. That's unfortunate. But what they did tell us is that she's also taking a statin medication for her cholesterol. And so these researchers sum up this report by saying, is it possible the combination of cinnamon and the statin may cause hepatitis, liver toxicity in some people? I would say maybe, again, another reason why to ask your doctor. Um, also, I'd point out that the majority of research on liver, liver issues appears to be stemming from laboratory animals, but these are people reports and investigations. So I think it's probably rare because cinnamon is popular. It's common. You probably got it in your kitchen right now. And if cinnamon, cinnamon really was liver toxic to a large degree, we'd see a lot more of these reports, but we're all individuals. And that's another reason why uh, I would say start with the least amount possible. Let's see how you respond. Let's talk to your doctor. We take any medications and stuff like that. Let's minimize any issues you might have. And again, if you're taking uh, cinnamon for your uh, blood sugar levels, your doctor can very easily measure your liver enzymes while you take it. So there you have it. Does cinnamon work? I would say that the research right now is strongest for type 2 diabetes, lowering blood sugar and other things, cholesterol, etc. And in terms of prediabetes, I think the research is there, uh, but I think there's less prediabetes research than type 2 diabetes research. It's probably going to change eventually, but that's kind of where we're at now. So have you tried cinnamon? I mean, if you have, let me know in the uh, comment below. I'll be very interested to hear what you have to say. Until next time, I'm Joe Cannon. Talk to you later.